Welcome back YouTube. This is Steve the Idaho Fabricator out here in snowy northern Idaho and uh, we got a lot of snow out here today and um, I really like plowing snow but not so much. So I'd rather be in the shop working so today on Idaho Fabricator we're going to turn the heat on, get in the shop and I'm going to show you what we're going to work on today. All right, guys, today we got to get after this fender on the 87 GMC. And uh, you can see here that it's uh, rusted all the way through. I got my fingers underneath there. Hope you can see them. So it's, uh, yeah, there's nothing left there. So today we're going to get after this. We're going to fix it. I'm going to show you how to make it look like new again. Uh, there's a little bit of rust here on the side. It's a low spot. You can feel it here. And so, um, we're going to have to come over the side a little bit and fix that too. So, um, so that's what we're going to go after today. Now, the first thing that, uh, that I did before, um, before I do anything is I take my, uh, my gauge. I've showed you this guy before and I go ahead and put it on the, put it on the side of the fender so that I can see what kind of a, uh, profile, kind of a curved profile I have. Okay. And then I, just went over to the vise and took a piece of, this is 16 gauge, no, 16, yeah, 16 gauge steel, or maybe 18, not sure. And um, I bent it over on the vise over on my bench, and I bent it until, I hope you can see that okay, it follows the profile just perfect. Now if you get a little, a little too happy with your hammer work, you can get a really nice bend like this, but when you put it into the gauge, you can see it just doesn't it just doesn't work right okay so this is a really handy deal it helps you find the profile now what that means ultimately is um, when I put this piece on and, and put this piece in there this curve here is going to match the curve on the fender and uh, that's what we want to get after so that uh, when we're all done you won't even be able to tell okay so that's what we're going to do today the first thing I got to do is cut away this top part here, okay, so that I can see, there's a, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a reinforcing panel underneath here. And it goes all the way along the fender, front to back. And uh, it has threaded nut certs in there where you bolt the fenders onto the bed. And so, and that's rusted all the way through also, so. I made a little piece for that too. It fits underneath, it'll fit under here and it follows this profile. And, um, but I wanna be able to cut this through to see how far I have to go. I don't wanna, I don't wanna replace more metal than I have to. You know, when you're working on these trucks and cars and stuff, it's best if you can keep a lot of the original sheet metal. It really helps. Um, if there's nothing wrong with it, there's no point in, in changing it out. So, um, so I just want to replace just what I need to, nothing more and nothing less. So I'm going to get the wizard tool here and cut this out and see what we got. Okay, I'm going to show you the tools that I use, that we're going to use today. Um, Cut-off wheel, some people call it a death wheel because somebody took the safety guard off and I don't know who that is. But anyway, another story. So you're going to need one of these. Um, Another tool, super handy, this little angled die grinder, okay, with these roll lock discs. Um, 60 grit, that's what I use mostly. And uh, this is what's called a, um, a burnishing disc. It's uh, the maroon one, it's got uh, adhesive inside of it. And what it does is it smooths out the uh, sanding marks left by the grinding disc. So we'll use that today too. Uh, gotta have a hammer and um, because these are like super handy for making the panel line up and stuff. So really we're just going to use uh, those tools there, I think, and obviously the welder and uh, we're going to get busy. So I'm going to cut this top panel off and just kind of go real easy on it. I don't want to 
I don't want to get the bottom in just yet. And uh, so let's get some cutting done. Screwdriver. Yeah, there's a couple of welds in here. I'm kind of hoping that they'll come out, but we'll see. It's nasty under there, isn't it? I'm just going to cut those off real quick. I've been doing this for a long time. I've never had one of these things shatter like that. It's really freaky. And, uh, you know, I joke around a little bit about safety, but I really am serious about safety. And uh, I got my gloves on, I got my face shield, which protects. And uh, so it's really important to think about things, be safe out there, guys. Um, Cause like I said, that's never happened before. And today it happened at peace and it could have caused a lot of serious injury if, uh, I didn't have my safety gear on, so <laughs> be safe, not sorry. That's my model. All right, well, let's finish cutting this and uh, see what we got underneath. like some of the rust has gotten back in here too I think I think I made oops I made this like extra big so it should be able to go past if we need it to all right so I'm gonna cut this other part away and see what we got stuff under there. under here, wiggle this out of the way, and so what I'm kind of doing here guys is uh, checking the fit, 
getting it where I think it's gonna go. This part looks okay. I just gotta grind this away a little bit. Get after that, so. I'm gonna do a little more grinding on this because I don't wanna spend a lot of air time just me grinding, so. Um, I'm gonna grind this up, clean this up a little bit, and uh, and show you where we're at, all right? Okay, I got this cut away, and uh, uh, this metal here looks pretty good. So what I decided to do was leave this sticking out a little bit. This piece here fits in between, okay? And this'll allow me to kind of give it some support on both sides. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna scribe along here and then I'm gonna carefully cut this out and I'm gonna kinda sneak up on it until I get just the right gap that I want. And when I get that done, I'm gonna scribe it, get all this done, cut out, and uh, when we come back, I'll show you how we fit it in place. And I just wanted to show you something here. I just took this out and look at how flexible the fender is. I mean, this is a huge structural piece. So that's why it's important that we get this fixed so that uh, the fender has its strength that it's supposed to have. So, all right, I'm gonna get some scribing done. I'll be right back. I got this uh, scribed in here, guys. Check it out. This piece is gonna lay in here like that. And uh, I think it's gonna work out pretty good. I wanted to show you uh, something I'm gonna use for putting this together, and it's these guys right here. If you've never used these before, um, these are, uh, they help you align panels when you're putting your stuff together. This fits through like this, and then um, this square piece here goes in between, and then you tighten this wing nut, and what it does is, it holds these panels in perfect alignment on the, on the back side here. So I'll get this one in and I'll show you. So you slide those little square pieces up in there. All right, and then you kind of adjust your panels. And what happens is that square piece pulls these so that they're flush. It gives you a nice flush edge. Also, it gives you about 50 thousandths gap, which is what you want. Um, if you were just to make a really tight seam and butt these things together, um, you wouldn't get full penetration on your weld. You'd just be welding on the top. And we want to get all the way through so, so we get the bottom side welded as well. So you leave a gap in there like that. Now these are pretty easy to find. If you feel pretty industrious, you can do what I did for many years. I made my own out of one inch square tubing. And um, since I couldn't punch a square hole, I used a round hole. And uh, I just cut a slot in it, took a screw and welded this piece of metal on it, put a wing nut on it and um, works great. So if you can't find them, you can make them. All right, so that's cool. So I got this kind of lined up here, and then I'm gonna, I think all I need to do here is pretty much just clamp these up on top so that they're flush. And then it's at this point, oops, that's not tight enough. See how this kind of moves in and out here like this? So I wanna push this in a little bit and get it where I think I want it. And um, really, you just kind of play around with it at this point, giving it a little tap with a hammer until you get, you get it where you want it. So at this point, it's just kind of just real being real fussy about it so that you get it just where you want it. So what I'll do, I'll put a weld here in the corner and I'll weld up on top, a tack, and then I'll tack on this side of this, on this side, this side in the corner, and on the top. 
and then uh, I can go ahead and remove these panel clamps and clamp this in the middle and tack. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go around this thing, tacking, leaving a space, you know. Don't want to put a lot of heat into this. Don't want to warp this panel. And uh, then when we get that done, we'll put that reinforcing piece on the back side. We'll fit that. So, um, see, look, I got this just clamped in together. And look at how strong the fender is already. It's not even welded, so. All right, I'm going to get my welding gear on. And uh, we're going to get busy welding, so. All right, guys, got all my welding safety gear on. And uh, I wanted to show you, I remember I had said, you know, leave a, like a 50 thousandths gap. Okay, well, I took a couple pieces of scrap metal and I just put a tack. Okay, that's the top. And if you look at the back side, you can see that the weld goes all the way through. If I were just to have butted those together and weld it on the top, I wouldn't have got full penetration all the way through. So I just wanted to show you, I mean, you see the gap and you go, oh my goodness, I'll never fill that up. But it fills it up perfectly and, um, and gives you a nice strong joint. So anyway, just a little visual aid for you. All right, so I'm going to get some up on top here and then I'm gonna let this thing cool down a little bit I'm gonna go get some lunch and then uh, when I get back we're gonna finish it up and it's gonna look like brand new again all right let's get some more let's finish up some tacks because I'm getting hungry Okay, time for lunch. I'll see you in a bit. All right, had my lunch. I'm energized. I'm ready to get after this fender and finish it up. Here's those spot welds. Um, as you can see, they went all the way through. They penetrated all the way. And um, they don't have to be pretty because we're going to grind them down. Uh, the idea is just now what I'm going to do is just fill in between, okay, not get a lot of heat in there, and then uh, we'll grind them smooth, and then uh, I've got this piece here, this is that piece that is the reinforcing panel, it's going to go in back here, and uh, I don't know if you remember, but I had a couple of spot welds in there, so what I'm going to do is... Uh, I've got my, this is a sheet metal punch, works pretty good, and uh, just going to kind of put it in the middle somewhere, oh, oh yeah baby, nice, it's a good thing I have my oatmeal this morning, because this is, oh yeah baby. So there you go. So this will go in here. I'll weld up these edges here, right? Grind it smooth. And then I'll do a little rosette here to mimic the spot welds. And that'll uh, make it super strong. So let's start welding, all right? <laughs> this in here, gloves on. 
the important thing not to get a lot of heat in to the uh, to the weld. You don't want to warp the metal because then you got to do a bunch of hammer and dolly work to fix that. So um, it's not so critical here because we have a because we have a edge here and that adds a lot of strength to it and it keeps it from warping. But nonetheless, we want to keep the warping to a minimum. So. Jump over to the other side. Okay, lots of sanding, lots of grinding. Here's the top. And as you can see, it looks like it's never been touched before. I got it all filled in on the on this side. And now I just have to uh, to grind it. So I'll get busy on that. And I did want to mention that uh, when you're grinding and stuff, don't cheap out on the discs. You need a nice fresh cutting disc that's really sharp. Because if you, uh, you're trying to grind this down and you, that sand disc is worn, you're gonna put too much pressure. It's gonna put heat into the panel. It's gonna weld or uh, warp the panel. So, um, you know, get a few extra sanding discs, some fresh ones, and just keep swapping them out. And uh, it'll grind faster. And, and you won't have any panel warping issues so all right i'm going to get after this sand some more and uh see if we can't uh make this fender look like new there you go nice and smooth can't even tell it was damaged before and uh i was going to show you guys what that uh burnishing disc does okay so All right, so it's kind of like a scotch bright, and uh, this is the maroon, and it's uh, medium grit. And what it does is it uh, removes a lot of the scratches left from the grinder. So there you can kind of see the scratches, and then I'll show you how this, how this works. So here we go. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it does a nice job. And uh, can't even tell we patched it. So I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna uh, put that little reinforcement piece on that I showed you. And uh, I'm gonna call this a wrap. So <laughs> stay tuned. All right, guys, through the magic of video, I was able to take. Uh, three and a half hours and condense it into this short video. So 
it takes three and a half hours to do this job and um, if you take your time you can get a really good result um, here's the finished product here and uh, there's little tiny little grind marks and stuff that um, you're gonna get and um, those are going to be cleaned up with a thin skim coat of body filler and uh, which is pretty standard in the auto industry and the body fillers they have now are so awesome they they they're just they're tenacious they grab the steel it's not like Bondo in the old days where it falls out and and uh, and this is only going to take a thin skim coat not much at all there's that that side there the part that mounts on the bed and then underneath here is the brace in there. And I didn't spend a lot of time on that because it doesn't show. So um, anyway, I got this done. I've got, let's see, one, two, three, three more repairs to do on this fender. Pretty much similar, um, not quite as extensive as this one. So they shouldn't take as long. And uh, well, I hope this helps you out out there. I hope that, uh, don't be afraid, you know, if you got a little rust on your fender, just, uh, with just simple tools, welder, grinder, and stuff, sanders, you can, you can fix these things and make them look like new again, so. It's been fun hanging out with you today, and, uh, this is way better than plowing snow, because that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'm <laughs> looking forward to it. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until I see you next time. Have a good day.